Good evening and welcome to Literature in 60 Minutes. I am Zandile Bowe and today we are talking the fourth industrial revolution. It's important for the youth of our country to have a, an understanding of the era that we find ourselves in and to know how they are going to participate in order to unlock the opportunities that lie in the fourth industrial revolution. I am talking to D. Setso Maluma. He is the author of The Fourth Industrial Revolution and Innovation. It's a collection of essays. And he will just be unpacking the subject of this industrial revolution because we're hearing a lot about it here and there, but there isn't really a lot of um, collective understanding as to what it means in, in terms of application for young people in our country. And I'm looking forward to that interview. And it's coming up right after the break. Zoe Live Radio, the abundant life experience. Bringing them up in the ways of the law. Family friendly. Are you ready? Zoe Live Radio, the abundant life experience. Welcome back, and we are chatting to D. Setso Maluma. He is the author of very many titles, but today he is talking to us about his book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And I'm looking forward to our discussion because the youth is living in an era where technology is the order of the day, and they need to be able to leverage that technology in order to change the lives of many people, not just themselves, and using that technology to implement and effect change on our continent would mean that we get to advance in the industrial revolution that is upon us. So, Tisetso, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. You can, I think you can just give us some background as to who is Dizetso and, you know, what does he do? How did he get to write the books that he's writing? Um, okay. Um, I've, I've always have a, had an entrepreneurial mind. Um, I would say, um, okay, so I've, I've got um, seven books in total and they're all about entrepreneurship. So my background comes from studying accounting, being a DJ, being a clothing designer, web mm. designer. Uh, so I've chased all, all, all those interests that I've had. So I've chased them. I've, I've done most of the things that I wanted to do. Obviously, there's still more, more things that I want to do. I'm sure. So, yeah, uh, yeah that, that's my background. And now I'm, you can say I'm always you know, searching for, 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 for answers. Um, also, I'm sharing my entrepreneurial lessons. So obviously, it's through blog posts and then you know, when you write blog posts, sometimes all that information really it's it's large enough to for you to go and you know write a book that's more consolidated on those on those topics. So True. my first book is called uh, "Forget the Business Plan, Use This Short Model," because then I was just frustrated with you know every day I'm working on this business plan thing is huge. So <laughs> that book was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> introducing a model that I was in a sense innovating, like in, a model that uh, just makes um, entrepreneurship easier for you to have one sheet where you can just view all the things that you want to do uh, the second too. one is called township best fast track the third one is tales of an african entrepreneur uh the fourth one is uh, the anxious entrepreneur so that book really deals with uh, so the subtitle is called anxiety defeats creativity mm. and creativity defeats anxiety so i was you know i went through a lot of anxiety because entrepreneurship is really uh, an anxiety peddling spot so it is it, it is. talks about that <laughs> yeah um and the other one is township is adjacent uh just a, it's a bit of a technical book so maybe let me not give that explanation um and then the sixth one is understanding the fourth industrial revolution and innovation easily mm -hmm. so it's a collection of uh the best posts that i've, that I've written about explaining uh, the fourth industrial revolution and the seventh one it's called innovate the next so the six and the seventh like, they came out at the same time oh okay yeah, so, so they interrelated the, like, in some way they connected they are inter interrelated one is a collection of blog posts so mm -hmm. uh, essays yeah and then the other one it's, it's a bit of a technical book in that it you know explains innovation from a basis of 
uh, of, of evolutionary biology mm. going all the way into really breaking down what is uh, the fourth industrial revolution. It's a, so it's a bit of a technical book because it's got a lot of biology, like the first half of it, it's got a lot of biology and then I'm just narrating how... Um, Laying the I ground. I mean, we innovate work. with this... Mm. Yeah, yeah, we innovate with this mind, but th this mind is a biological gift, so it's a biological innovation. So I like saying innovation is just an extension of biology. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and, and now mm -hmm. our focus for today is the fourth industrial revolution and innovation, which is a collection of mm -hmm. essays. Like you said, it's blog posts virtually. So mm -hmm. now I think just for context, take us through mm -hmm. the different revolutions that has led to the now fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. um, so I like explaining um, um, all the industrial revolution in the, in the following frame. So mm. fourth industrial revolution is just basically innovation going forward. Yes. So we are human beings. We've got a brain that started innovating things in like, um, just think of a chair. Someone created a chair. Mm. That's where the innovation starts. From uh, that chair, someone taking a wheel and a chair, mixing them together, becoming a wheelchair. Someone creating a motor engine um, and then incorporating that motor engine into a chair. So now it becomes an electric chair, uh, a wheeled electric chair, not the mm. <laughs> not the normal phrase of, <laughs> of an electric chair, as yeah. the Americans say it. I see what um, you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, incorporating that, like, um, incorporating that chain to a boat, you've got a motor engine and that's a running um, boat and then incorporating that mo uh, motor engine into a car and incorporate the chair. So with this frame, I'm saying innovation, it's a stack. It's a, mm. it's always, we're staking things, we're staking them up, we're staking them up to create things that didn't exist before. Yeah. Even the frame of the fourth industrial revolution is just innovation. It's a description of, the, of an era, but how we got to the fourth industrial revolution is that there was a third, there was a second, there was the first. Mm -hmm. So even though we, we say, when we say industrial revolution, we just say they affect how, because we are, we, we are, we, it's like how industry does things, right? Yes. But yes. there were other, many other, you could say, revolutions. Fire, there was a fire revolution, uh, meaning human beings at some point they didn't know how to start a fire. So now there was a point where we could start that fire. And then with that fire, we did so many other things. Mm. For example, mm. mining of uh, gold, steel, because you need fire to melt those things. Yes. Um, that fire revolution really also um, affected the, what do you call it? The, the, the steam engine, again, also it uses fire. Electricity mm. also, there's a fire element. So you can just see that one thing pushes the next thing to happen, the next thing to happen. Um, now, when like when we say the first industrial revolution, again, it was just innovation had been pushed to whatever stance that it was in that era. Just, I think it's a more of a political term of explaining an era wherein people, humanity was getting into mechanization. Yeah. Uh, the second industrial revolution is really where they were fiddling with electricity. Again, I said fire revolution. Like we 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 needed fire to. We still do use fire to produce electricity. Uh, the third industrial revolution was the digital uh, revolution. Mm -hmm. So meaning computers, um, and then we've got you know, the fourth industrial revolution. And like I'm saying, all those, re like I, I don't wanna explain it in a cram work textbook sense. Textbook way, understand yeah. That, yeah, mm. textbook way. So it's a frame, innovation, you're mixing one thing and another to create something. I was saying a, a chair and a wheel, it's a wheelchair. Uh, you're mixing internet with banking, it's internet banking. So innovation works in that frame. So it's, we, whenever a new innovation is created, like the internet was, you mm -hmm. could mix it with another innovation, which is banking, becomes internet banking. Yes. Even this uh, fourth industrial revolution, again, it's like that. You can always mix, um, you could say 3D printing. 3D printing is that it also fuses water. There's, sometimes there's an element of internet there. Um, or there's an yeah. element of, uh, I mean, you can send some, like just simply literally just sending an email to someone to do, um, what do you call it? Uh, a cat design of 
whatever thing that you want to manu uh, uh, manufacture with 3D printing and then them sending it back to you. Again, you know, it, it incorporates internet, that whole process. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really that innovation is just accumulative staking of things, you're making things, you're making them to create something new. Uh, another example, maybe it's what you're mixing internet with video. Mm. Internet, okay. uh, start, the, 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 the innovation for that, they started tinkering with it in the 60s. Video had, had been there even before then. So when you mix in them, you get video streaming. Yes. Uh, that's what YouTube became, and well, they were, YouTube had it's had had competitors. Sorry, in that in that era, so innovation is just a step of things. So even the fourth, the fifth industrial revolution, when it comes, it'll also just be a step of things to create something that didn't exist before. Mm. It was a long stretch. <laughs> it was, and and I, yeah. I appreciate you expounding on it because people mm -hmm. need to get an understanding because a lot of the time you would find that somebody understands something conceptually, but there isn't yeah. application in what they're understanding. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand it as a concept, but how does it apply mm -hmm. to me? How does it apply to Zodwa, you know, the 16-year-old mm -hmm. in Mamilodi who's trying to mm -hmm. understand how they fit in this whole big bubble called the Fourth Industrial Revolution? Um, so the other day I was, I think on June 16th, I was I was giving a talk to a group of, of, of young people mm. and also I was just breaking down how innovation works. So um, I've got a workshop series that um, I, I usually do called um, It is the Cheapest and Easiest Time to Be an Innovator and Entrepreneur. Mm. So in context of how does it apply to young people? Um, Thing maybe 20 years back, right? To register a company, you'd have maybe to travel to Pretoria if you stayed. Um, you'd have to travel to uh, the DTI if you stayed um, far away. Uh, or you'd have to pay someone to go and register that company for you. Yes. I remember when I registered my first company in 2005, five, five six there. Right? I think we spend almost like a thousand, right? Sure. Because we pay someone and then, you know, they yeah. will go to There's the a middle man. Like it, it yeah. seemed like a very technical thing to do. But however, today, um, because of um, innovation, we can just simply go online and register a company. It's 175. So imagine from like, so it's making yeah. things easier. Um, yes. Another cheaper. context is that, yes. in cheaper years. Mm. So another context is that, um, uh, when I was in clothing, I remember we do uh, quotations for manufacturing of shoes and all this, like different quotations. Um, sometimes alcohol, like, you know, when you're browsing around ideas, you're doing all this research, and uh, maybe you want to make your own clothing, you want to make your own uh, clothing, shoes, all these things. Mm. So there's this thing called MOQ, minimum order quantity. So usually then around 2008 there, the, the minimum quantity order was what was around thousand units sure. that's a lot mm -hmm. and yeah just think of it this way so say um to make a pair of shoe shoes um say it's 50 bucks uh and then um to make a thousand it's like is it 50k yeah my math is not good but it's a lot of money definitely uh now because we are in 2021 because of innovation because um I, I will, I will, I'm going to go in a bit of a technical uh, uh, stance a bit on, but let me frame it this way first. Today, because of innovation, um, there are machines, there are smaller machines which can run smaller patches. Like even if today, if you wanted to make a whatever patch, you would get a code from a, maybe a Chinese company. Mm -hmm. the, at, at the minimums now run from uh, 30 50 units so it's no longer a thousand units so mm. meaning if you wanted to make 50 uh, pair of shoes is 50 rents by 50 units it's cheaper than um when you were making it the moq was a thousand units why it's because machines have gotten smaller think of uh cell phones yeah. uh, over the years cell phones have been getting smaller and smaller so i remember I um I used to have uh, I think 2000 and I don't know, around 2010 I would I had like a digital camera that I bought for 1.5 I had a, a GPS uh, I had a, a BlackBerry phone that I think I bought for 
yeah. know, 3,000 or something, somewhere there. And then there was a laptop. But now, today, all those things are fused into one. Yes. In, in, in a cell phone, you, you get, you've got maps, um, you've got a good camera. Um, mm. Like a typical phone today is better than my uh, two, 2010 Nikon camera. So all, all think of all those devices, they are in one. So just imagine 1.5 for a camera, 1.5 for a GPS, 3,000 for, what do you call it, for, for, for a cell phone, it was like um, 3,000 plus 1.5, it was like 6K. Mm. Today, um, a good quality phone with all those features and even it takes even clearer pictures, it's about 1.5. So it's a saving, so meaning it's cheaper. Why? Because, so innovation goes for agility. Yes, definitely. Meaning things become smaller, become more efficient. Um, the, what is it? The, the chips that, you know, like a computer, it's got a CPU inside a CPU. Um, just, I forgot the name, the transistors, mm -hmm. right? So the transistors have been getting smaller and smaller. So if it's getting smaller, but again, the, the, the capacity, it's, it's getting bigger. It's getting smaller and the capacity is getting bigger. It's called like a... There was this uh, Moore's law, uh, mm. meaning they're always, you know, innovating further. But when they're innovating further, the devices become smaller and smaller. Mm. So again, um, think of a cell phone integrating so many things uh, that ten years ago those things would have to be separate. Again, the same technology goes towards manufacturing machines. So, like I was giving the context with shoes. Mm. So things are, are becoming smaller and cheaper. So it allows us to get into any business that we want today. So it's cheaper today. Um, to get into certain businesses that uh, years ago we needed thousands and thousands uh, of, of, of money to go to go manufacture them. So again, mm -hmm. I, what it means is that it's like I was saying, it's the cheapest time to cheapest and easiest time to be an innovator. All these different equipment, uh, transistors, all these things, it's easier to to purchase them and you know create whatever innovation you want. Even many businesses relatively they are cheaper. Uh, to make a website in i think 82000 i think in south africa it would have cost you around 200000 sure. so today <laughs> so today to make a website it's like what it's literally free or you you'd probably just be paying for hosting mm. there's wordpress which got, has got many templates so innovation moves in that realm mm. things become cheaper it, it becomes easier so that's the context of um young people should know that innovation is making or rather fourth industrial revolution is making things easier and easier and cheaper to 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 to, to really start whatever business you want or to be an innovator um even youtube has got you know thousands of hours of different topics that you can learn on now you can even go and learn how to fix a car yes. just on youtube so you're only spending data you can learn how to um do coding online so many free things so the context of the fourth industrial revolution is that things are cheaper. If let me maybe throw uh, just one more example. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to say make uh, toys today, yes. Uh, back then, like you'd have to go make what a mold, a mold like a plastic. It's it's it's, it's yeah. Uh, I see. Like, I see yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's a mold. And then that mold again it's expensive even when you manufacture it got like minimum order quantities of like thousands or something there mm. but today uh there's 3d printing which can um, help make you that prototype and most universities have got this 3d printers sometimes don't even, you can pay because there are people who uh, hire out their 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 uh 3d printers but again in universities there are there are a lot of um, 3D printers. You can all, always go to, all to these organizations and it's cheaper now to make a prototype of the many things that you wanted because of what? Of the innovation. 3D printing has really advanced. You can do a, a 3D um, print of whatever thing that you want to do, maybe a prototype. So it's easier to start today. Mm. Unlike, you know, that's what innovation brings. That's what the fourth industrial revolution brings. The fifth industrial revolution will also bring um, that ease of, of, of making things possible, cheaper, it's cheaper. But now uh, what's most important for me, what, what, about what you were talking about is accessibility. So yes. what you are basically saying is that 
with this fourth industrial revolution comes innovation, comes change, but also things are becoming more agile, but they're more, that means mm. they're more accessible. So with yes. this accessibility, I mean, we have online courses for days. You were talking about um, YouTube now and how if you can mm. learn virtually everything now on YouTube. Do you mm. feel that our youth, you know, considering our history, the statistics that we have in the country, I mean, we are now at 74% mm -hmm. unemployment rate for the youth. So mm -hmm. how can that accessibility translate into the youth of this country going into that maker space, you know, of, of participating mm -hmm. in this economy and, and, mm -hmm. and making sure that they are getting involved and they are learning and, 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 and participating in a way that economically enables them to come out of mm -hmm. the dire situation that we find ourselves in um you know that's that's uh like I, I get asked that question quite a lot i think that's a that's a hard one mm. um so maybe the um it's okay how do we maybe become better teachers because mm. i believe what i do is more so in a sense teaching how do i uh take the information to 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 the youth so it's the innovation is on one side, people are on another side, but then how do they, how do we make sure people go towards it? Like I'm saying, it's a, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a hard one. Mm. Um, you know, the unemployment stats, uh, they are scary, but yes. also I, I see a lot of positivity in that, you know, I'm, I'm amongst entrepreneurs, I'm amongst young people really doing interesting things in, in innovation, in robotics. Mm. So uh, my world is maybe a bit, you know, skewed in that mm, I see <laughs> that a lot of guys are trying. Mm. Uh, but again, that trying is entrepreneurship. It's hard. So like, like I'm saying, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, of, a, of a hard one. Like it's got so many uh, variables to it. Uh, but yeah, like I'm for my work really is just to get the information out there to people. Uh, there are others who are who are doing that, but I think uh, on a hard stance, people need to go towards where the innovation is and learn mm. all those things. But as to like it's it's hard. It's just a it's a hard question for me. Like yeah, it's it's quite hard. <laughs> So now, considering, because uh, I'm hearing, we have the Fourth Industrial mm -hmm. Revolution Commission in our country. Mm -hmm. I believe that um, our president has embraced that agenda in terms of maybe trying mm -hmm. at a policy level as well as a government level to try and mm -hmm. enable people in as much as he can. But yeah. now, academically... Because everything boils down to just how much knowledge and how we are nurtured in that basic education level. Do you think mm -hmm. that we are in a position of advantage or that is a liability uh, for us in terms of getting uh, ourselves geared up for this revolution? Mm -hmm. I think we are at a bit of a, a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll give it in this way. So I, there are a lot of young guys who are trying to do things in technology wise, but uh, most of them don't have, you know, uh, although things are easier, just the funding uh, mm. to get uh, some of their um, prototypes. They can make the, pro uh, the prototypes, but just entrepreneurially getting things out there, uh, not a lot of people are willing to fund uh novel I products guess. meaning mm. things that are not yet in existence or a bit aged. so i think the the, the 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 disadvantage is there in that look the world works on novelty there's there's elon musk who's mm. doing all his innovations he's creating novel things but now the context with american economy is that uh it's huge almost 100 million people so there's a lot of money running around in, mm -hmm. in that economy to get things done so in our sense, in a macro level, I would say maybe government intervention would be to really fund um, a lot of young people's innovations and really just getting them out there. Yeah, I think that's that's mm. it's, it's like we need to fund novelty to get anywhere. Like otherwise, if you're not creating novelty, it means someone is creating it and they are the other ones who are ahead and they are the other ones who are really um, creating opportunities for their their home country so we need to find a lot of a, a lot of novelty 
So I, th- I believe that innovation is very solution driven, right? Um, there's mm-hmm. a problem that needs to be solved. Therefore, we need to either, you know, innovate from how mm-hmm. we have cu- currently solving it, which is not adequate. So what mm-hmm. are some of the challenges that you see in your space? Like you said, you, you maybe your you perspective perception is a bit skewed because you are in an environment mm-hmm. where you see a lot of activity and movement in this area. Mm-hmm. But now what mm-hmm. are some of the solutions that you think um, from a 4IR lens we should be trying mm-hmm. to solve or problems that we should be trying to solve? Yeah. Um, um, I think I, I think of it in this way, innovation really um, creates abundance. Mm. Um, so Look, like there's so many, uh, in, like for example, with the, the definition of the 4IR, it's said to be fusing uh, 3D printing, um, it's fusing uh, uh, self-driving cars, like all, all of these different, you know, uh, innovations uh, or rather categories. They, 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 there's a lot of things that we can create out of them. So mm. it's that knowledge thing, like, uh, if you know, like we've got insight into different things, then you would be able to innovate. I mean, the self-driving car. There's so many things. The software building in that. Um, the, there's biotechnology, a lot of devices. All this, like, it's just a. I think it's a multivariate of of, of opportunities, but mm. uh, we need. Um, so another thing is that you know, as as I said, innovation. It's like accumulating. It's sort of making things. We need young people who will really be able to know quite a number of uh, traits. So, because when you are, when you know a, a bunch of traits, mm. uh, you are able to see how you can fuse them. You are able to say internet and banking can come into one thing. So, I think mm. it's that maybe from an education perspective, skills need the schools need to teach, uh, or rather, maybe uh, change sort of the curriculum to teaching kids in terms of doing different trades, uh, programming and that, mm, uh, maybe uh, biotechnology and another one. So, I mean, innovation is that, like, it's a, f- it's a fusion. When you, f- when you, to know what to fuse, you have to know um, a variety of, you have to have a variety of insights. So it's that, like, yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned because I'm feeling like we are in a country where 30% is acceptable as a pass rate, you know, um, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and there is just so many obstacles on the path of mm-hmm. us taking full advantage of this wave, you know. Um, mm-hmm. We have lots of children who are dropping out of high schools and all of that. Do you feel you're just saying knowledge? Knowledge is important because mm-hmm. then once you mm-hmm. come from that position, you are able to fuse two things that wouldn't ordinarily be put together. But because you have that knowledge mm-hmm. base, you are able mm-hmm. to integrate the two. How do you, do you think that um, as a country? We are, are well poised, you know, policy wise, for IR commission and all of that. And you maybe you can also give us estimate timelines because I'm sure you've done thorough studies on these things. What what does it look like our, you know, either catch up or gap closure period is going to be? Yeah, that's that's also a difficult one uh, to, 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 to estimate. Um, so okay, let, let, let me. So I, 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 I in, in high school, I, 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 I was doing commercial subjects. Mm-hmm. Uh, after, um, after matric, uh, I went to study accounting. Yes. But what I would say is that uh, after matric, although I did accounting, I did English, I did all those subjects. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't really equipped. <laughs> Mm. to meaning i needed further education in accounting even after doing a diploma in accounting i still had need i still needed further uh what do you call it i still had like internship to mm. really um say be an accountant now what with all, all what, what i'm mentioning is that our education system because a lot of kids are dropping out so mm. it would be better maybe if they are lot they are taught trades you know mm. uh, unlike uh, like there's a fusion of trades it goes back to that having insight into different things so maybe there's um, uh, there's motor mechanic um, there's programming there's maybe photography so that even after matric you are able to go and work if working is what you want to do so the way I see the education system is that 
after me, she still need further studying, after studying, still need further um, internships. So I, I think maybe the, 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 the education uh, needs to be fused with a lot of trades so that even after me, even if you're not going straight away to school, but you are able to fix a car, you can make money mm. for, your, for, for yourself. So I think it, it needs that um, um, uh, from a policy perspective, from an education perspective, it, trades need to be introduced into into schools mm. but now only a few people will be will be entrepreneurs and create jobs so what i'm saying is that um, if people have a lot of trades from a high school level and they're not only doing motor mechanic they're doing programming because all these things again a car is it's a, it runs on on a motor engine but then again it's got some programming so again it helps a person have an inside but also they can actually make money from from the get go after matric if if they want to go to school they can pursue a, an a, 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 an entrepreneurship venture because mm -hmm. they've got the skill to yes. provide something that will you know be um, they've got competence for like, uh, people like saying competence gets compensated so from 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 that perspective but also in any society, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are always a pool of small, uh, uh, few people. Mm. Uh, so I was saying with the education system, if maybe it's skewed like that, because uh, entrepreneurs again, they are also fusers. They fuse things. They take this and that and make and, and make create whatever product. So maybe from an education perspective, if you can get that get that right, uh, the, the pool of people who are entrepreneurial mm -hmm. will be larger than what it is today. Hmm. So, in terms of timeline, um, yo, know, that's 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 uh, that's uh, that's hard to estimate. Uh, hmm. that, it's very hard to estimate. But I mean, um, uh, when you graduate from our school, you are, you are around uh, 17, 17, 18. Yes. So all these things really go with generation uh, to generation. We've had to change the education system. Probably it'll take maybe ten years to kick in. But then, if you do shorter courses. It's like uh, maybe in two years, um, studying motor mechanic in high school. By the time you finish high school, you've got several trades, and then you know at least maybe it reduces the gap in how we see transformation, mm, like mm. Uh, broadly in, in in society. I I you've talked on, you touched on the world of work. So our world mm -hmm. of work is changing. You know, coronavirus mm -hmm. also bringing a new shift into the dynamic. Mm -hmm. So now, what does the world of work look like in the fourth industrial revolution? So that those who do not know can get a mental picture that what we are doing today in terms of how what we call work and how we execute our work, how is it going to mm -hmm. change or how is it likely to change? Uh, you know, I'm not so much scared um, in, 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 in like the world of work changing sometimes we like to like usually people would say um the four ir uh, will take people's jobs right mm, that's because the common it's phrase yeah. but now yeah it looks like a educate educated guess but it's if you look historically mm. innovation always creates new industries Correct. today they're influencers today there's zoom there's like it's, it's a complex system that creates more complex complexity complexity and complexity really um again in, in another i needs it's, it's more opportunities so more careers that were not there are going to be created like it's it's it's, it's difficult to say where is it going but now historically innovation always creates newer jobs now maybe the discrimination of where it would be is that people would really need to be um, smart or educated True. to really be able to work some of these jobs that the 4IR will be bringing. So uh, again, maybe the discrimination is that it's on a cognitive level. Um, yes. If you dropped out of, of school and you did, didn't do uh, sort of a a trade or a, you didn't develop any skill mm. that would really make money for you like something that people need people always need their cars to be fixed people That's will true. always need clothes they'll always like you, you need to have a, a skill that will uh, allow you to you know uh, work within all this complexity that i was 
explaining that uh, it, maybe education it's 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 the disc- the, the, the discrimination uh, mm. that the world of work will exclude those who haven't you know developed themselves educationally so maybe that's where the complexity is, is becoming like a programming all these things people would need to really um, have uh, skills to operate in within this whole complexity of the 4 ir so this the scare the scary part is that if a larger percentage of of our youth um is not get, getting educated that's that's a hmm. i think that has that's got some dire consequences mm, because i think with that then it delays our mm-hmm. entire development as a as a as a nation and even as a region mm-hmm. in africa because i i believe that this is not only the case for us it's it's a problem that's mm-hmm. continentally um mm-hmm. so now my i want to delve into i think it's your greed economy correct in your book that you mm-hmm. reference can we talk um, about that okay so um i i did the um, there's, a, there's a device um, a pyramid i call the human greed pyramid mm. um people who are listening they can quickly go uh, on on, on uh on google just google human greed pyramid so i i explain it in this way um at the bottom of of the pyramid it's nature yes nature includes people mm-hmm. and then uh, the second layer of the pyramid going up um it's human behavioral inclinations i call it human behavioral inclinations what i mean by that is that um human beings have got inclinations hunger is an inclination mm. love is an inclination uh, belonging is an inclination those things are there biologically um the third layer after human behavioral inclination is uh, uh cognitive uh, function mm. sorry functional cognition so uh functional cognition works in this way so as kids we would, we would you know love sweets and then but we didn't know that money um buys sweets but then as soon as we learn that you know uh, we need money to go buy sweets would ask our elders for money to go buy sweets. sometimes a kid would even ask i need 100 rents to go buy sweets. they don't really understand you know calculations and value yes. of money but yeah. they just know that they love those sweet things so it's a it's a, functionally they understand what money can buy them because they want sweets right mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that and so the fourth layer is culture i define culture as everything that we do mm. religion is culture uh banking is culture everything that we do is culture so the, the, the other layer of the culture is is um enterprising innovation enterprising innovators are those people who run culture they run religion it's the priests it's the bankers Mm. uh it's the people who own all these businesses and at the top layer of the pyramid is novel innovation so novel innovation is where novel novelty is introduced to society it's where a chair was first introduced mm. it's I where see. uh baking muffins was first introduced because everything at some point has to get introduced or has to be created now um then the novel innovators the likes of elon musk and all these entrepreneurs creating things that were not there yes every novel innovation for it to be successful right it has to mirror human inclinations mm, uh if it's good, sweet yeah. uh biologically it said that we, we we evolved into loving sweets so biological sweets have got an effect on us so every other innovation for it to work it has to mirror human behavioral inclinations Mm. and the people have to uh, cognitively understand it they don't have to understand uh, like i was saying with money you don't need to you know understand what is fiat money because now it's due to bitcoin now we for, for a lot of us we are, we are hearing for the first time that there's a like our currency is called fiat but we didn't really understand what it is but we just knew it's money it can get me food i can take care of my family with this money so all these innovations that get created they have to mirror human behavioral inclinations for them to be uh, successful and then when they are successful or they are being used in society they are part of the culture so every innovation has to mirror p- people's inclinations function 
cognitively they have to understand how it functions and how it benefits them. You can think of drugs, right? Uh, mm. Drugs are bad, but somehow behaviorally, biologically, they mirror people's inclination. That's true. Hence, people always go uh, to them. So whether it's something that we call it good or we call it bad, as long as it's being used in society, it, it means it mirrors our human behavioral inclinations. All these other innovations, you can think of, I don't really, like I'm not in mining, I don't really care about mining, but um, mining, what it does is that it mines steel. When you build a house, you need that steel window. Directly, you don't, you don't have to understand what's the benefit to it, but we all understand that the house has to have a window. Yes. Um, it's um, if it's frame. a beautiful window, mm. it, aesthetically, it sort of, it, it, it fulfills your inclinations, your, your inclination for aesthetics. Mm. So that's where I sort of devise how the world works, or rather who runs the world. The innovators introduce the useful things for us. Those things get successful. For them to get successful, they have to meet our, our behavioral inclinations. Functionally, you have to understand what we can get out of them. Uh, think of maybe, um, say a dating a person doesn't really need to understand what is this but because maybe they're looking for love they'll figure out a way to, to, to use, use it, it. so because yeah. it's an innovation it can get that, them something it's so meaning it mirrors their their behavioral inclination biologically somehow like there's always a way everything that we see today in the world that we use and is successful it's because at a certain level it mirrors our our inclinations even if it's emotionally uh, sometimes, obviously, uh, we have to eat food to survive, so that's also part of our inclination. Mm. So the pyramid really just sort of describes how society functions. Sure, that is that is an interesting <laughs> one, hey. Like I've, I've I yeah. know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but then mm -hmm. I'm seeing yeah. wha how beautifully you've blended it into that because mm -hmm. it, it it really speaks to what our our impulses and how do we respond mm -hmm. to them using whatever it is is at our yeah. disposal you know um mm -hmm. but uh, i think what i want to talk about next is we are focusing on the youth and i want them mm -hmm. to understand that this economy we are now in the knowledge economy so like you said you need knowledge in order for you to sort of it's like a turnkey aspect of mm -hmm. of you tapping into this fourth industrial revolution so mm -hmm. the mobile device is in our hands more often than not now some people are addicted to their phones so how do mm -hmm. we use that tool to tap into this revolution revolution um i think it's, it's just a matter of education it's a matter of with this phone now you can go into youtube yes with this phone you can the uh, thousands and thousands of of podcasts like this one so this tool really like in in your hand you you've got access to the world you've mm -hmm. got access to manufacture things uh there's alibaba if you want to get something manufactured uh maybe in china like this small powerful tool can really change your life um, just through knowledge, mm. through being able to access certain things that uh, back then you maybe needed to get to a, a, a pay phone to maybe order something. Mm -hmm. With this tool, uh, you can uh, write books and then just courier books again from your house. Like every, you can like everything fun. You can you can handle a business just in in a phone even like even now we are you know on this call mm. we can do this call just anywhere so that's the power of this tool that i guess a lot of people really don't know um like everything okay so my my sort of world view is that society like it's you know that 80 20 rule so yeah. it's always a, a few people who will create change but now being part of that of, of that 20 percent or rather just a few uh you have you really have to take initiative so sort of my most of my information is about the individual not necessarily you know about the group so it's always a few people who are going to make a change so if to be part of that 20 percent you have to be a person who takes initiative to 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 get whatever you want like all your outcomes depend on the individual taking initiative so i always urge young people that it's cheaper mm -hmm. um, to be an innovator, like I was saying, but all these things for them to happen, no one is going to bring them 
to you. To you. Mm. You have to take the initiative to really make things happen. But with this information that most things are possible today, but you, you really have to take initiative. You have to risk uh, money uh, to get things done. If you don't have money, you want to start, you want to start a business, you want, uh, you need, you need some money. So how do you get money? Maybe you get a job, maybe yes. you sell whatever thing that you need, like, but because things are cheaper, you can just, you know, work for a couple of months and really get into whatever thing that you want. But the initiative rests with, with, with the individual. And yeah. I, th I think, you know, you, we've touched on the world of work. We've touched on, now you're mm -hmm. saying that the, the initiative rests on the individual. We've, we've spoken knowledge. There is a, a, a gig economy, you know, discussion now. Yeah. There are lots of people mm -hmm. now working in the gig economy. So our young mm -hmm. people, like you were talking capital, how, how does one leverage the opportunities that are currently available in the gig economy mm -hmm. to become the, the, the microfinancing, I think, that they need in mm -hmm. order for them to, to start those, you know, businesses that will be turn mm -hmm. into something bigger and bigger enterprises from mm -hmm. their phone because that's where the gig economy rests. Yeah. So when, when you say the gig economy, um, maybe you just elaborate on that? The gig economy is finding work online because these okay. days we, we, we are so used to working going and, and, and going to a physical office and, and being employed okay, there. Okay. But these days, people find work online, people can uh, teach online, people can transcribe, mm -hmm. people can do different things. So that economy is very much active and it's at a global scale. I mean, they, you mm -hmm. can work for an American um, organization from our continent and you, you yeah. can tap into different uh, ex, uh, opportunities from across the globe simply by being connected to the internet. So how do people access those and, and, and take advantage of that, which is currently, you know, happening? Okay. Um, I think, yeah, now I get you when, you when you say the gig economy. So uh, you need, you, first you need a skill in something to really be, to, to be able to end. So let's, for example, you are a graphic designer. Mm. Uh, there's so many websites today that you can go and register there. Like there's Fiverr. Yes. You can put your work there. So when someone wants um, a graphic designer and then, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> they can find you on Fiverr. There's another website called 99design. So you need to make a skill first and you can teach yourself the skills. Mm -hmm. I was a graphic designer. I was a web designer. Mm -hmm. All the skills I taught myself. So you can put yourself there on Fiverr, on 99design. Like there's so many websites today that's kind of like crowd work. Mm. Uh, you can push, but you need a skill first, but these skills mm. you can teach yourself. Like it's more possible today to do yourself those skills. And then I guess that's the gig economy. You can put yourself out there and people will, will, will really find you. But the first thing is that you need, you need a skill. You need to have, be able to deliver something that someone wants. Mm. Either it's a, a, a website, it's a, it's a, the logo but you need you need that skill first you like teach yourself something photography mm. you can teach yourself photography online um, there are so many tutorials uh paid ones and free ones so but you need a skill uh that you know someone would be willing to pay you wherever that person is in the uk they are in the united emirates um, but first you need that skill like teach you that there's so many skills that people can teach themselves so yes. again, it, it goes to what I was saying about the, the individual. Mm. The individual needs to make sure that they get a certain skill. And you can get it for free. Probably what you'd be paying, um, it's what? Uh, it's for data to go and learn all those sort of skills. But I think if you need a, you need a, like a, you need a skill, you need a bit of a trait that you can sell to someone. And then you can, meaning you're competing though internationally to a lot of people. So you really need to put in some time and really get better in that kind of skill. But if you are, above average then i guess you'll always have work and then with that uh, with that skill then you can find your other things so mm. i think we, a person needs a lot of skills yes definitely. Um, most of my businesses um how i find them is that i've got various skills that i sell you know in in, in, in another marketplace and then i use that money to really fund whatever thing that i want to do so it's kind of like it's a 
we are in like a renaissance era, meaning you, I think it's really just to you need a lot of skills. Yes. You need a lot of skills, you need a lot of insights that you can sell in, a, in the marketplace and then use your funds really to maybe learn other skills or to plow that money into, into another business. And I like that you're saying that because it's important for the youth and young people to understand that there needs to be a massive investment on your part. So, mm -hmm. or, uh, and I'm I'm thinking more in terms of social media. I mean, everybody is mm -hmm. now on social media and we invest a mm -hmm. lot of data in being on all these platforms. But I think yeah. there should be a shift, you know, instead of being on facebook and instagram with two gigs mm -hmm. of data you could be on a online course you could be doing mm -hmm. something that is empowering and equipping you and giving you a skill that you can then mm -hmm. you know um uh, get money out of you 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 can monetize it over time you know um so i think it's an important transition because we see this lifestyle of people wanting to be influencers with, with not really mm -hmm. much to influence and I, I, mm -hmm. I think there needs to be a shift from that and people understanding that yes we can have one two three five people that are famous for nothing but most importantly we need to have a bigger pool of people who are skilled mm -hmm. and dedicated in, in into participating in this economy and and making sure that they make the relevant investments in themselves mm -hmm. as individuals in order to be mm -hmm. able to take advantage of this but i think any parting shorts from your side into, into what advice would you give to a young person in south africa today who needs to gear themselves up for for ir um i think take matters in your own hands mm. um make sure that every year you are teaching yourself something like, teach yourself a skill like pursue your interest mm. but then to pursue your interest the reality is that you need a bit of cash there and there yeah so true. work out a way uh to earn yourself an income so don't be ashamed of getting a job in in retail get like do something like just take initiative and uh, pay your way forward like because i said things are cheaper today so you can learn that there, there are thousands of courses online you can learn many things but you'd have to fund them or you have to put effort into it so i'd like for me the advice is individually like you are the individual take matters in your own hands and teach yourself a lot of skills so not just one skill but a lot of skills because it gives you opportunity to also kind of like sort of see uh, around the corners where other people can't see. And then uh, it gives you an opportunity to compete globally. You can yes. decide, design a logo for someone who's in the UK, like I was saying. So uh, take matters into your, to your own hands, but also don't be afraid to pursue your your interests. Uh, you've got a maybe clothing design is your interest go and do it because in doing it you will not only be learning one skill you'll be learning marketing you'll be learning other soft skill like negotiation like you'll just be improving yourself so you'll be able to put something on your cv uh, if you want to get a not only a job like if you want to get a certain position like it, it, you're equipping yourself like pursuing entrepreneurship gives you a lot of technical skills and it, it, a lot of uh, soft skills. So yes. it just makes you a thorough person. Um, so I was making an observation um, the other day, like I was just talking with my friends that we all run startups, right? So all of them, one, the agreement that is that whenever we want to hire someone, yes. uh, we need someone who can do hundred things. Uh, again, they know, <laughs> they understand graphics. Yeah, they it understand must be multifaceted. So, mm. Yeah, so because really a business does all those, you're doing social media, you're doing um, your writing, you like, so I'm saying also write, I'm, what, what I'm saying is that also learn a lot of skills, like develop your, yourself in many ways. Mm. So that also gives you an advantage to get into the door because you can do many things. Sure, okay. And people, like this economy wants people to, it wants people who are multifaceted, like, mm. like, yeah, like we say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now people can get to know how they can get a hold of your books, um, how they can get a hold of you if someone wants to take this discussion further. Sure, sure. Um, so I'm on all on all social media. It's Isezo Maloma, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, the books are available on my website. It's isezomaloma.com. 
-hmm. And also they are available in all the bookstores uh, nationwide. Uh, if you can't find it on the shelves, just approach uh, the counter. If they have it in stock, obviously you, you'll get it. If they don't uh, have it, then you know where to get it. So technically they're available in all bookstores on Take A Lot, also on my website. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate what you've shared. And I, I hope a lot of people who are going to listen to the show will take it to heart that it is an individual decision and it is really up to you as a person to decide whether or not mm -hmm. you're going to participate in this economy or you're going to let this wave ride. Uh, but thank yeah. you so much. Um, I am going to be closing out of the, the after the break. Please stay tuned. The Zoe Live Radio. The Abundant Life Experience. Wow, welcome back. Um, I hope that as a young person who is listen or who has listened to what Dizetso has had to say, are taking it to heart and are going to take it seriously. I love the advice that he gave us about it being an individual responsibility for us to take this economy and take full advantage of the fourth industrial revolution so every young person out there there is a massive massive opportunity online offline you can start your own business you can go into the world of work however you need to understand how you need to be equipped in order for you to be effective in that space. So thank you so much for joining us for today. Um, I look forward to chatting to you again next week. We are going to have yet another exciting author chatting to us next week. Until then, have a fruitful week and I will catch you next week. <music>